so this is a nucleus this is and these colors have no meaning it's just for explaining these are not the color of light that you're getting just to for me to speak that's it so what Bohr is saying electron can only be here or electron can be here what is special about this special about this is angular momentum does everybody understand angular momentum is mvr right so mass of the electron times the velocity of the electron times this radius has to be an integer multiple of the reduced Planck's constant h is the Planck's constant h divided by 2 pi which is more often encountered is called the reduced Planck's constant please note it down h is the Planck's constant h by 2 pi is the reduced Planck's constant and that is also written in many places as as h bar to save time you don't have to write h by 2 pi you can write h bar so we are saying this is quantized because this is some number now angular momentum has to be one times of this two times of this three times of this so let's say one times of this gives you this energy level two times of this gives you here right so now we are saying once you have come up with one of these orbits here these orbits are stable now Bohr is not giving you the answer why you're asking me why not releasing energy first of all let me tell you Bohr is telling you it is not releasing energy and Bohr is saying I'm not able to tell you why but he is saying when electrons go around in this orbit they have they are in a stable orbit in the sense that no photon is emitted i mean i'll talk more about this from heisenberg perspective but arvind have you understood what what uh, 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 what uh, bohr is telling you bohr is saying trust me on this when electron is here it is not emitting any photon if arvind thakur asked me why bohr is not able to explain that right this is what postulates are but 10 12 years later at heisenberg's uncertainty principle came in and i'm not talking about that it is going to be deviating us a lot when heisenberg uncertainty principle comes in and that actually means arvind thakur is a particle and arvind thakur is also a wave dual nature that we are going to study i think few weeks from now then maybe we can talk about this and i will talk about this I will talk about this in a few weeks when we study dual nature of Arvind Thakur. So I'm not kidding. I mean, this phone is a particle in the sense it has a fixed location and, and momentum and all that. But this is also a wave, as in there is an uncertainty in the position of it and momentum of it, right? So when Heisenberg is explaining all this uncertainty principle, a part of this will be you will start looking at electron as a wave, not as a particle. But when you look at it as a wave, you will actually see this is a standing wave. And standing waves are stable waves. And when you do the calculation there, which I'm not doing as of now, it is two lines of calculation. From that calculation, you actually end up getting this. It's not a piece of a very difficult calculation, just two pieces of calculation, which you are going to do later on. Clear? Check it. So for now, you have to trust Bohr and say okay i agree with you on these three things and this is how the model of the atom is going to be so electron will be either here or here right now that has more strange observations i don't know how many of you have ever analyzed this because what we are saying is electron can either be here or it can be here this brings a very strange thing it's more like saying ninard subodhi leaves the house ninard subodhi goes to school ninard is allowed to be only at home or at school so ninard is not supposed to be even for a picoseconds here ninard is supposed to be teleporting himself disappear here and appear here isn't that what it means because whatever speed you run with even if you speed run with the speed of light you're still for some time here but that is not permitted it's against the law of the nature kind of right so now we are saying electron jumps from here and comes here how is that even possible now all these answers come in when you go to the quantization quanta quantum physics and you start looking at all these as as electron not being here electron being a probabilistic kind of function there we are not talking of all that right and i'm really sorry if i confused anybody there but all i'm trying to say is these things we should bring up some questions in your brains so can we move on with the curriculum here? Can we move on? Okay. So whatever is a little beyond syllabus, you can ignore it. Whatever is required for the exam, I will tell you. 
So here is the summary of what we did regarding absorption of photons and all that. Please ask me if it is not clear. And we are going to study dual nature of um, radiations and, and particles uh, very soon. Very soon it will come. Okay, radius of nth Bohr orbit. So now we are going to into the mathematics parts for now. Okay. So let me see if I had some questions to ask you. Yes, can somebody tell me this? Protons are positively charged particles. They should be hating each other. And I have spoken about this couple of times in the previous classes. So I'm expecting 100% right results there. <clears throat> Still, there are wrong answers, actually, unfortunately. So I'm repeating what I'm saying. Proton, proton should repel each other. So why are they sitting together inside the nucleus? Nucleus should explode like a bomb. OK, I'm glad that majority has given the right answer, but that majority is not an absolute majority. In the sense, it's less than 50. So option number three, 45% students said it, bound by a strong nuclear force. Yes, Ninat. So, Bodhi, yeah, your answer was right. Take care. So, you have to really understand this. I mean, this these are the things you, you have studied in grade 11. They will come here when we study radioactivity. You have to be really careful. And I spoke about this at the end of the previous class, if you were listening. For 15 minutes, I gave this introduction. So, these are being repelled by, by Coulomb's force, K times charge of proton which is equal to charge of electron charge of electron by the distance squared they're repelling each other right but then then if you bring them close as in very very close as in 10 to the power minus 15 which is inside the nucleus this electrostatic force is there but there is a strong nuclear force that develops now and this is really really strong very very strong and that is keeping keeping all those protons inside tightly packed. How do you have those inside nucleus? Nobody knows. We do not know that. Right? And that is why we cannot create this scenario. Please be very careful on this. Right? And it's not gravity. Some students are saying gravity. Gravity is almost nothing. Gravity is one of the such a weak force. It is weaker than the weak nuclear force. Gravity is almost negligible amount of force. Can I can I move on? Uh, are you listening, everybody? Okay. Let's do a tiny little activity here. So let's say this is North Pole and this is South Pole of a magnet. Okay. There is an iron pin here. Does everybody agree iron pin attracts to the magnet? This is iron. Does everybody agree? Iron pin is attracted by the magnet, right? That's something common sense, not even like if you have to study physics. Now in 11th, you studied free body diagrams. So let's say this is the iron pin. What are the forces acting on this iron pin? Can you tell me? Can anybody tell me what are the forces acting on this? So Arvind Thakur says Mother Earth is pulling it down and he is saying it's the weight of the body, right? What is the other force acting on this? Because it's not moving, it has to be in equilibrium. <coughs> what is another force acting on the pin? The electrostatic force, then magnetism, right? Now let's let's really I mean I don't know how many of you have analyzed it earlier. This electrostatic force is because of this tiny magnet. Tiny magnet, right? This big. This weight is because of 64. 100 times 1000 meters of earth pulling you 
including all the houses all the the trees and everything on the earth because everything is part of the earth right so now so many things pulling you down and just one tiny thing pulling you up and the the magnet wins do you understand the difference in the 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 forces there so gravitational force is caused by everything on the planet which is trying to pull the pin down and this tiny little magnet says no i'm going to pull you up and the tiny little magnet wins and this shows how force of gravity is nothing compared to these electrostatic force and other forces okay okay radius of nth bohr orbit so now we are going to into a little uh, so now th these are these are the f like like you number them now right so we are saying they are into some fixed orbit part of this has been covered in your chemistry classes also so the first orbit is called the ground state right that's that's the stable state here that is a stable state now the second orbit is called the first excited state when the electron comes here it is excited it doesn't want to be here it will go back and when it goes back it will release energy right when anything wants to have the minimum energy level there okay? now this is the second excited state second excited state electron has a few options now it can either do this and do this or it can do this so you can see there are three different energies that are possible here right the difference in the energy between these two difference in energy between these two and difference in energy so when you see that spectrum you will actually th see three lines in this case <coughs> right when you have four you will actually see six lines over there so combination of two at a time now yeah so all this we are talking about hydrogen atom as of now or hydrogen like atoms so I think I'll bring up the slide here. I think there was a slide which I skipped and I thought I'll come back there. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are either talking of the hydrogen uh, atom. So hydrogen atom has one electron there or we are talking of hydrogen-like atoms. Hydrogen-like atoms may be helium because helium is, what is helium? Proton, proton, neutron, neutron, and then electron, electron. If you just knock off one of the electron here that becomes a positively single positively charged uh, helium right so that is actually like hydrogen because it has one electron in there similarly lithium barium and then boron so as long as you have only one electron they qualify as hydrogen like atoms <laughs> I think I skipped a oh yeah, Bose atom based on following postulates. We did this earlier. So that was the only slide I missed.